Today on One Road, we're going to be ripping the valve cover out of the passenger side of my 95 GMC Suburban. <laughs> The reason I'm doing this is to try to diagnose a ticking sound that I've had ever since I bought this truck. I've owned it for almost four years now and I've had this very slight ticking sound that drives me nuts. I've done lots of research on the subject and of course found out that it's kind of normal with the 5.7 and even the 5.3 motor and probably any GM motor for that matter. But among that research, I've come to a video on YouTube that is very, very good that talks about the valve adjustments you can make in these motors. Now, this video is by a guy named Ken. He spells it out plain as day. It's extremely easy to follow and understand even for laymen like me. So what I plan on doing is kind of taking his method and looking for a single valve that needs to be adjusted, maybe two, and hopefully I can get this ticking noise to go away. And the other thing with that is just the other day I pulled the spark plug out of the passenger side closest to the firewall and noticed there's a lot of oil on the threads. And part of that is a few months ago I did an actual tune-up on this truck and that same spark plug had a ton of carbon buildup on the ground electrodes. So we're trying to get to the bottom of that also. Maybe it's all related. I'm hoping so. Otherwise, I may have a failing valve seal, which I've done some research to and will probably have to tackle also. But I think today we're just going to focus on the valve adjustment. Well, on first glance, looking at the motor, we can see our valve cover here on the passenger side. And of course, it is covered up by a few things. So I'm going to have to remove my air box. We're going to have an obstruction here and back here. So I'm thinking that the easiest way to deal with these obstructions is probably going to be to remove this heater hose here. Hopefully that'll work. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and remove this air box. Not necessarily a box, but you get the idea. Now we can remove this PCV valve, just simply pull up. And what do you know, I just noticed this crack in my PCV system, we'll have to get that fixed. With just those few things removed, what I'm going to do next is actually remove the valve cover bolts. I know there are still some obstructions, but I really want to see which ones are the most necessary to remove. This may be an issue, but also it may not. It depends on how we can get this valve cover out of here. I'm fairly certain though that that rear heater hose may be a definite issue. To remove the valve cover bolts, I have my quarter inch ratchet and a 3 8 socket. With all four valve cover bolts removed, I can now start to crack the seal. <clears throat> there we go. All right. These valve covers use rubber gaskets, so they're fairly easy to remove and also reuse. So we've definitely got the obstruction here and we definitely have an obstruction there. So the lesser of the two evils is this rear heater hose, so I'm going to have to relocate that. This right down here is a quick disconnect for that heater hose, so it should be no big deal to remove, although I may spill some coolant. Okay, so this is incredibly difficult to get to, but I'm going to try to use two hands here. Come on. Okay, that should be it. I felt them both click. Okay, there we go. Well, we're dripping coolant. Not a whole lot, which is good. Not a whole lot at all. Okay, so we do have a little coolant coming out of this fitting here. I gotta quickly grab a towel and start mopping it up. Hopefully that'll stop pretty soon. It's at the top of the intake. I can't imagine much more coming out. And with that out of the way, I should be able to lift the valve cover. I have plenty of clearance on that side. I just have some wiring here to kind of push out of the way. See if I can get this thing up and out. This thing may actually pose a problem. Maybe I can fold this thing down a little bit. What are we actually getting caught on? We are making some headway here. You can see the valve cover is very loose and wants to come out. This refrigerant hose is our biggest obstacle here, and I do not want to have to remove this entire air conditioning compressor from its housing in order to get this whole thing over. Uh, I just don't want to do that. I want the option to be able to start the truck up if I need to with the valve cover off so I can hear any more ticking going on after I make an adjustment. So I think that I'm going to have to do something about this and possibly this oil dipstick tube because it is hitting right down there. Okay, I'll be using my same 3 8 socket here to try to take this dipstick tube out of here. <clears throat> wow. That was 
That was tight. Well, it seems as though there is going to be no possible way to get this valve cover off without removing this air conditioning compressor here. So I guess that's what I'm gonna have to do. It looks like I have a couple bolts, maybe one, uh, another one down here, and then I think a third one directly underneath this pulley here. I'm hoping I can remove these three bolts and just kind of roll this thing out of the way. I'm hoping that's the case. If it is, it'll make my life easy. If not, I don't understand the design. I'm making some progress with the AC compressor and I just wanted to show you one thing. These through bolts that hold it in place, if you notice down here, there's actually a tab on the bracket and that's because these bolts don't actually thread. There's just a nut on the back that holds them tight and other than that, you just push them through. In order to clear the housing, you're gonna have to spin it to the flat spot, and then you can just pull it straight out. All right, look at this. During the course of trying to get the bottom AC compressor bolt out, I was lifting up on the compressor and this valve cover basically just fell right out. So that gave me enough clearance just to get this valve cover out. All right. Now that we have the valve cover removed, we have easy access to all of the rockers and the bolts. What I'm gonna do is start rotating the engine 90 degrees at a time. And every time I do that, I'm gonna be checking the push rods for excess play. I've got my half inch ratchet and I got a 5 8 socket on there with a couple extensions. And I'm just gonna push this down about 90 degrees. It's definitely not easy. Now we can go through and feel the push rods for excess play by spinning them and trying to lift them up and down. So far, I've rotated the engine 90 degrees about six times. Everything feels pretty good to me. Last thing I'm gonna do is start the engine up with the valve cover off, and of course, none of the accessories running, just for a short period of time, and see if I can hear any clacking. All right, so everything started up just fine. And honestly, everything also looks really good. I don't really hear any clacking either. I'm gonna go ahead and give it some revs and see if we can hear a difference. I can definitely hear a little bit of clacking. Well, all right, guys, I think we have a result. After about 20 to 30 seconds, I started to hear the clacking, the ticking sound. I gave the motor some revs and it got a little louder. It sounded exactly like what I've been hearing ever since I bought this truck. I can hear it in the cab when I'm driving, the same sound. And it was coming from the rear of the motor towards the firewall. So then I got out my mechanic's stethoscope. While the motor was running, I placed a stethoscope right here on the bolt of each one of the rockers. And yes, they all somewhat clicked, but when I got down here, this was the loudest one and it definitely was a different clacking sound. What I'm gonna do now is start the engine, loosen this bolt until it starts clacking loudly, tighten it back up slowly until the clacking goes away, and then give it a final three-quarter turn. I might do the same for the intake. I'm really hoping I'm onto something here because if I can take care of this ticking sound, it is gonna make me happy. As always, if you have any suggestions about what I'm doing, please leave them down in the comment section below. Well, I hope you're enjoying this video so far. It seems like we're getting somewhere. If so, please hit that thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Let's get back to it. So what I did was hooked up all of my accessories. I put the belt back on, put all the bolts back in my AC compressor. This way I'll have my water pump working and my alternator working to recharge the battery. I also reconnected my heater hose over there so I don't have any more spilling coolant all over the exhaust manifolds. And now I'm gonna start it up and attempt to quickly adjust this last rocker arm. Okay, so we got it going. I'm gonna go ahead and place my ratchet on the last rocker arm. Okay, I hear the clacking. We'll tighten it till we, the clacking stops. This is about right there. Now we can go three quarters of a turn very, very slowly. One quarter, that's two quarters. Okay guys, I just got done adjusting this last rocker arm there. I backed it off until I heard the clacking. I tightened it right back up until the clacking went away completely and then gave it 
three quarters of a turn, very, very slowly, one quarter at a time. All of my accessories are hooked back up, so I have water pump and power and everything like that. And you can see, we don't really get very much oil spraying unless you were to rev the motor. Speaking of revving the motor, let's give that a shot, see if we can hear any more clacking. You can see with some revs, we do get oil on the cardboard there, so it's good to have something to block that from getting on the uh, exhaust manifolds. I did still hear a little bit of clacking. I'm gonna take my stethoscope and try to listen for that. Okay guys, so here we are again. I just got done adjusting the exhaust valve. Now we're gonna adjust the intake valve. Just basically gonna loosen it till I hear the clacking. Okay, there's the clacking. Okay, it's not clacking anymore. So now we're gonna give it three quarters of a turn. One. Two. And three. That one should be adjusted perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is take my stethoscope and listen. At this point, I've adjusted both of the rear intake and exhaust valves the best I could do. It's kind of hairy because the motor's running. You got oil kind of spraying everywhere. Um, even with your block, you know, you start seeing stuff smoking and stuff. So it kind of gets your uh, adrenaline pumping and everything, but it is a, a way to do it. It is a technique to do it. Um, I'm not claiming to be a professional at it by any means, but uh, this is the second time that I've done this on this motor. The other time was on the other side. Did it get rid of the clacking? I don't know. But in terms of how you adjust your valves, if you did have clacking, this is a method that I have seen on YouTube many times and ha have heard a lot of people talk about. Um, is it perfect? Probably not. I would definitely do your research before you attempt anything like this. Study up on it. Know exactly what you need to do before you attempt anything like this. It is somewhat dangerous. You definitely wanna wear uh, eye protection and uh, any sort of uh, hearing protection and you know protection for your hands from chemicals and stuff like that. You also wanna make sure you have a fire extinguisher around uh, possibly water in case you have a fire. You never know if something starts on fire in this case. Okay guys, I went back and added another quarter turn to those last two valves just because I noticed when I was loosening them up to hear the clack, I did like six quarters to get the clacking. So it wouldn't make sense to me that you'd loosen six quarters and then only retighten three. So I ended up putting a full rotation in there, four quarters, and uh, you know, I think that's gonna be perfect. And once again, guys, I wanna reiterate that I am not a professional with this stuff. I'm just a guy like you who's looking to have fun with my cars, trying to work on them myself, learn as much as I can, and do the best I can. From all my due diligence, I don't think that there's gonna be any issues with these two valves at one full turn. The only thing I have to do now is button everything back up. I reattached everything, tightened every bolt, and put the hat back on. And all I need to do at this point is to start it back up and hope that heater hose quick disconnect doesn't leak. I'm not super certain that I solved my ticking problem, but hey, at least I got a good look under the valve cover and uh, everything looks pretty good. Well, she's running and uh, she sounds good. Nothing seems to be abnormal in any way. Um, I do have a little bit of smoke from the oil that's got on the uh, exhaust manifold. So that's pretty normal. I'm just kind of letting that burn off. Um, but everything is running great, just like it always does. Uh, this motor, like I've been saying, is it runs great. Uh, so anyways, that was my attempt at adjusting the valves. Uh, I was gonna try to do it with the motor off but in the end, I decided to do it with the motor running. And I think it was good to just kind of see 
what's underneath those valve covers, and how exactly do you adjust the valves with the motor running, and you know, does oil spray everywhere? There's a lot that you can learn from watching what I did. There's also a lot you shouldn't do uh, with watching what I did. I'm not a professional, I've said that already. I just want you guys to know that. Don't copy what I did. Um, I'm doing what I think is best for my motor, and you need to do what's best for yours and do your own due diligence. But I hope you got something out of it. I hope at, at the very least it was entertaining. If it was, please hit the thumbs up down below the video, and if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Also, check the description below for more information, and leave a comment below if you have a suggestion for me. All right, guys, I'm Jimmy with One Road, and I will see you in the next one.